two years ago, I purchased this $10,000 Mac Pro to edit my YouTube videos faster. It failed. Today, the M1 and M2 MacBook Pro can edit faster and more efficiently from anywhere in the world. But what if I need that MacBook Pro to multitask with three monitors, increase my storage capacity, manage backups, run my network server, and provide a high-end wired audio monitoring all from a single USB cable? I plugged in the Anchor 563 10-in-1 docking station to see if it was up to the challenge. Here are the results. So I have this system plugged in right now and it is what is powering this entire setup. But there are a few things that really stood out to me about it. So first is this is a full docking station and not just a hub. So it's powered. And here's why that's important. So I actually have an Anchor USB hub and I use it when traveling quite a bit. And I've been using this for like a year. I'll actually link it below. And it's really awesome. I really like it a lot, but this is not ideal for a desktop setup because here's the issue. If you plug this into your computer, but don't actually have a laptop charger plugged into the device, now this doesn't have any power to provide power to your USB devices or like hard drives or things like that without actually pulling from your computer. Also, if you do plug your computer charger into this, most of those are about 100 watts and you need that for charging your computer. So if you have hard drives or other things plugged into this consuming power, then not all of that power is going to be going to your laptop to charge it faster. So ideally, you do want a full power docking station. Now, when I first unboxed this thing, I was pretty blown away with just how big the power brick was. But when I looked at it, it's 180 watts. So you're getting enough power to power your computer at full blast. And that means you're less likely to get things like throttling on your computer because it is getting all the power it needs. Plus you have things like 30 watt charging or 30 watts from the USB-C port. You have 7.5 watts on the USB-A port. And so all of this is being powered from the actual hub itself. It's not stealing any of that from your computer. The other thing that's pretty amazing about it is it can actually drive three displays. So you have two HDMI port and display port. Now what's really unique to this as not in a lot of other docking stations is with the MacBook Pro M1, you can actually power all of these displays independently to be able to get different feeds. These are not mirrored at all. So you have plenty of real estate and you can use it for multitasking. And this is something that a lot of other hubs and docking stations just can't do. All right, so this is the entire setup we've got going on right now. And this is all powered right from the anchor docking station right here. So I literally have one cable going from that docking station to my laptop and that's it. I'm getting power straight from there, triple monitor setup, all kinds of stuff. And literally I can just plug out one cable, go come back into the studio, plug in one cable and this is my setup. So let's break down what's going on here. So this is a 10 in one docking station. So you actually have two HDMI ports, one display port, an ethernet port. You have two USB C's, one going to the computer and one that you're able to connect things to. Uh, that's also 30 watt powered. So you can actually use that to charge things. There's also three USB A ports and a one eighth or three and a half millimeter audio jack. And here's how I've got this set up completely. So right now I have dual HDMI running two of my monitors and another one in the display port. And that is giving me three monitors and these are not mirrored at all. I'm literally controlling each one of these completely separately. And this is allowing me to just do things that I could never do before. Plus, the way this is situated is that you can get 4K 30 hertz on one display. The other two displays are going to be 2K at 60 hertz. So that what matters for me is going to be my main display. This is what I'm doing most of my internet browsing on, everything, basically my entire timeline is here from doing photo editing. This is really the only display I'm using a ton. So this is set up to be my 4K display right now. And then I have 2K being pumped to both of these. And that's plenty of resolution for what you're doing. So I can play on my computer and have this set up right here. If I need to pull files, I can pull them from this monitor to my timeline right here. And I have this glorious display 
display seeing everything that I'm doing right now. So probably the most important thing for me is I needed a working hard drive and that's because I only have a terabyte on my laptop. Maybe you guys spec'd it out a little bit more but Apple charges just insane prices to bump up the hard drives on their laptop. So I work off of four terabyte WD black drives and I'll link to these below. I really love these drives, they're super high speed. So I am using one of those plugged into the USB-C port. It gives me extremely high speed editing. I can edit 4K, 8K timelines right off of that. The next thing I need to worry about is a backup. And for me, having backups is probably the most important thing that you can ever think of because these things go out like crazy. I've had a couple drives go bad over the last couple of years and I have two different backup systems. So the first one, they're made by SanDisk. They're professional drives. These are built like a tank. They're very heavy duty and they're also really fast because you don't want slow drives even for backups or else you'd be backing up all day. I'm backing up like four terabyte SSDs. That would take forever. So this is running my time machine to back up my laptop. It is also backing up my four terabyte SSD so that if anything happened to that working drive, I still have a backup of that. So that is occupying the USB-A port, the 3.1 high-speed USB-A port. But let's talk about networking because networking has two things for me. So one is I am ethernet connected because this has an ethernet connection to my network here. And that means I have the most stable internet system. If I'm doing uh, like Zoom calls or live or anything like that for YouTube, I have the most stable connection I can possibly get. Plus, as a bonus, inside of that networking station is also my Synology NAS drive. So I have a 100 terabyte Synology NAS drive attached to that network. And that is basically housing every project I have ever worked on since I started shooting video and photos. So as soon as I plug this in, I can access every project I have ever worked on. And so that gives me so much flexibility. So for all of my storage and working options, that's how I've got things set up. So let's get into my audio system because this is pretty important. We do have that eighth inch, three and a half millimeter jack on the docking station. So how I use this is I have that plugged into my monitors. And this is really important because you really want good, clean, wired audio. I'll use wireless sometimes if I'm on the road, but wired audio is gonna be the way to go when you're in the studio. So my monitors that I use here, I think I paid like 200 bucks for these and they sound amazing, really clean, not very exaggerated at all. So I highly recommend these. Plus they also have a 1 8 inch jack on the front of them plus Bluetooth built into them. So that left me two USB-A ports and these are not the fastest USB ports. So you don't wanna use them for things like hard drives, but they work well for a keyboard or mice or anything like that. But I have a wireless keyboard and mouse set up. So I didn't need that. What I did need instead was the ability to have something extra. So for me, I am using this system. Let me unplug it real quick so I can show you. This is made by Palette. There's a couple other brands that make things like this, but this allows me to basically have shortcuts for all kinds of stuff. So I can have my volumes for my audio tracks. I can have these buttons shortcutting to different things in Lightroom or any editor that you use. There's knobs. You have a full digital display readout. I really love having this. I don't use it all the time, but it's really cool for editing. And I have this plugged into one of those USB ports. The second, my microphone. So I have this Shure, uh, what is it? MV7, I think it is. Uh, this is a great podcasting mic. Yeah, MV7, uh, if you're doing podcasts, but honestly, I use it more for like voiceovers. If I'm doing lives on YouTube or Zoom calls, anything, you can use a really high quality mic like these. They are not very expensive and it's USB and it goes straight to the hub and that allows me to have high quality audio in with these microphones while having the high quality audio out to my speaker systems as well. So this is the entire setup for the Anchor 563. I have triple monitor set up, insane speaker systems, three different hard drive systems plugged into this, all kinds of peripherals, audio, microphones, and it is an awesome setup right here. So let me know what you think so far, anything I should add to this. I actually have a whole bunch of cameras that just came in this week, so stay tuned. There is some crazy stuff on the way. I can't wait to share it to you. Hope you guys are doing amazing and I'll see you soon in a new video.